Well, hello, everybody. And so my section here is going to be when does APQP PPAP apply? So I'm Daniel McCarty, the um, head of quality for uh, precision cast parts uh, fasteners and the engineer products divisions. So I've been representing PCC structurals because I used to be in structural. So I've been kind of uh, attached to the AESQ as a, the uh, deputy or um, uh, or delegated voting member for the, the committee. So I've had a lot of experience with the, the development of the AS13100 as well as uh, participating in this, uh, this subcommittee. Next slide, please. So it's January 1st and you receive a purchase order and within that purchase order, it's, you're gonna either get a flow down from one of the aircraft engine OEMs such as Rolls-Royce and Sabre, or well, I'm going to say Pratt Whitney SQR01 and or GE S1000, and within the uh, that flow down of those requirements, you're going to note that AS13100 is being addressed in there. So you you have full flow down, you're incorporated with the AS13100, and you're thinking to yourself, well, I got this new PO, what do I do with it? Okay. Uh, I have a lot of legacy product. I, I, I have also some new product. You know, does APQP and PPAP apply or doesn't apply? So there's, there's various uh, elements to consider when we're looking at this, right? So if, the, if we have product that has not had a existing APQP or PPAP package previously, then you would consider that legacy product unless unless you've made some changes or maybe the customers made some changes to the design. So if it's a design change, then, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be some requirements. There will be an addition to what you'd be used to do in regards to product qualification, or you've made some changes at your own facility regarding that process or the inspection or even the tooling, you know, these things are all to be considered. So you ask yourself, okay, so if it's new product, I know I'm going to have to do APQP and PPAP, but if I made one of these changes, how, you know, where do I go, right? And whether this, this, these changes are outside of the customer is that you made a transfer to another facility or you refined a process, made some changes to it uh, that uh, may, may uh, uh, be considered very significant. And when I talk about significant versus insignificant, whether it's negligible, I think the, the, at the end of the day, you have to really rely on your point of contact to determine whether or not that, the, from a customer standpoint, if this is considered significant. However, you know, at the, one of the tests to that is, are you changing, uh, are you changing anything that may affect the inspection, the form fit or function, or other processes that may directly impact the product itself. So that's always a good rule of thumb. But, you know, you, you have a various areas to address with the understanding the requirements, and there's some references here on this uh, presentation as well as a, a little bit of a decision tree to help navigate that. So once you've decided that you have to do an APQP, and submit a PPAP package, you know, what areas do you address, okay? And it could be, if it's new product, it could be everything. If it's, if it's a process change, then it might be a, a particular element. Next slide, please. Okay, so you have a, you have a matrix here, table 10, uh, which is a great tool to help you navigate that, right? So if it's, if you look at this table here, and it kind of talks about the different elements of that uh, APQP, and then what would what situation would apply. So as you notice, there's some footnotes there and whatnot, but you you basically you go across the top and kind of uh, categorize what change you have, and then roll down to see what elements would be affected. So really great stuff. There's some definitely some tools to help you navigate 
the end of the day, if you have any questions, contact your customer rep uh, to get further clarity. Um, there's also the RM13145 that has a lot of uh, good stuff in there to help you navigate, as well as the FAE training courses. So uh, with that said, I'm going to turn it over to the next presenter.